good morning, good afternoon, good evening, my illustrious family. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the mental house with me, your illustrious host, Khadija. Okay, family. I got a couple things I want to say before y'all flip the page on this magazine show. Uh, the first thing I want to do is, is I want to uh, thank Taraji Henson. I want to uh, also, uh, let's see, besides Taraji, who else was on there? Uh, we'll put it like this. The Breakfast Club did a very, very important, not just important, not just important, but they did a very, very um, needed, much needed program, um, you know, just regarding our mental health. Okay, you guys? And I just think it's real, real important. I think it's more important than y'all wondering or whether if you're going to vote Republican or Democrat, <laughs> I think it's more important than, um, you know, any of those games that are being played to divide us, not only as a human family, but as individuals, because the stuff is so crazy that, um, you know, you just can't even, you can't even fathom. The vision is so maddening. <laughs> That I just think it's just um something that we really shouldn't even try to pursue, and what's a more what's more important to me is to try to pursue some uh, peace within, to find a corner in the world, to find a situation where I'm honoring and I'm protecting my mental health. I'm understanding how important that that is. I'm understanding that a lot of my calculated behavior that I thought was my behavior and my attitude is just learned behavior um, and behavior that a lot of my community engages in that is not the most healthiest. Um, it was Taraji Henson. I think it was Jay Barnett and Tracy J is who it was. And the Boris Henson Foundation dot org is the name of Taraji's um organization. The foundation I believe is so important. I I'm so happy, I'm so thankful, I'm so grateful that people are coming on board and beginning to discuss our mental health. Y'all looking at a nut in the White House. He's got he's a person that has a severe personality disorder. And as long if you've never had any kind of therapy, if you've never had any kind of education in terms of what narcissism is, personality disorders, or any of the five clusters, cluster Bs, then there's no way in heck you would be able to identify Donald Trump as a person who was just not only um, a sub complete narcissist, um, but he has some severe psychological issues. Now, with that being said, I don't have to be a, um, a therapist or a psychiatrist. Everything within my nature repulses, is repulsed by Don, uh, him. Whatever his name is, Donald Trump, as my grandbaby say, Donald Trump. Everything in me is repulsed by him. And anybody that is a spiritual person, anybody who is not uh, evil, as far as that's concerned, is repulsed by Donald Trump. And this is what's so important that I want y'all to understand. When we laugh at and look at those people that are supporting him and they don't care about wearing a mask even though that there's a COVID and Herman Cain died from being at one of the rallies and no, and the worst part is nobody even acknowledged his existence 
which is so sick for any. Okay. They're not even acknowledging their existence. So if you at that rally and you drop dead, you know, hey, they're not even going to say nothing at, at the next rally. That's how insane the administration is. When you got people that are willing to do anything at all costs to win, there's nothing ethical, there's no integrity, and at the end of the day, there's no God in it. You didn't come to this world with a Bible or a Quran strapped to you. Okay? There is an innate mechanism that Almighty God put in you. If you, whatever you perceive it to be, creation, the creator, the higher power, if you're moving in a normal direction, is a chip that the creator puts inside of you. And your heart, like Maurice White said, is you're born with a heart of gold. It's the way of the world that makes your heart cold. It's an environment that you uh, put in. And I think that's why, what was it? Was that Erickson and Freud? And that's why they kept having the um, the debate. But I'm, I'm, I'm saying that to say, when you have somebody like Donald Trump and they're doing a lot of projecting, 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 and you don't even know what that means. You've never even heard it before. You're not, that means you can't even recognize it when your mama d does it to you. You can't recognize it when your father does it to you. You can't recognize when your siblings do it d because you, you, you don't have no route roadmap. You know, and if black people are not really receptive of mental health and mental health um, treatment. And I'm glad that these barriers are being broken down because of people like Taraji and, and Charlemagne and, and, and Jennifer Lewis. I, and, and I so appreciate these brothers and sisters. You just don't understand how much. Because as I call this, this thing the mental house, I'm dealing with my own mental demons. This is not why, I mean, it's not like I'm perfect. I ain't come from the world. My mental challenges, my mental madness is what led me here. Hell, I come from America like the rest of y'all. And so if I'm willing to say, hey, I'm sitting up in here and I'm noticing something ain't right, it's easy to go to the doctor and say, I got high blood pressure. Or he tells you, or uh, give you, run you some blood tests and say, oh, you're a diabetic and all. That shit easy. But nobody wants to talk about the stuff that is really detrimental. The things that cause you to have anxiety. The things that have your temper so damn revved up that if somebody challenged you two questions deep, you're ready to fight. Or if somebody questions you, you're so emotional, you're crying all the time. We in a black community have so many mental health issues. So many. So many. And it's about time that we stop trying to be so hard and start being who we are as a people. We're the same people that Christopher Columbus saw at the shore. He said they're so vulnerable. They're, they have a humanity. They have a humbleness about themselves. It's like when you see the uh the the, the Asian or the Chinese person, the Japanese, the Chinese, they're always bowing down to you. It's part of their culture. They humble themselves. They as soon as they see you as another human being, they give you that honor. You know? Um and all I'm trying to say, I'm not saying that they are doing honorable things to the Africans, right? Uh, over in Africa. I'm not trying to say that. What I am saying is that those Africans over there are um, true to their nature enough to not do anything about it. And I'm saying when we get back to, to that, to the essence of ourselves, we will be able to, to defend ourselves a little better. Because right now, the reason why we can't defend ourselves and the reason why we keep hurting ourselves, we're not loving ourselves. Because we've been taught to hate ourselves. I mean, and that's a fact. So these are not the, the rules. And I didn't make them up. They were here when I already got on the planet. Shit was already going on when I got here. 
excuse my language. But I want to also commend a brother, uh, Mike Tyson. And that is his program, um, what is it, Hot Box. And I think that he dares talk about the vulnerable, emotional, fear-based behavior that we have and the essence of who we are down to our core. Um, I want to commend him on his show. When I was more specifically uh, the show he did with uh, Boosie. So there's a lot of people that respect Mike. So to come on his podcast is uh, probably a blessing in itself. And then when you start talking to him, you, you can hear he sounds like a guy that has had extensive amount of therapy. And I'm glad for him. I'm glad for him. And it's people like him, people like Jennifer Lewis, that keep me motivated and keep me inspired and allowing me to realize that there's nothing more important than my mental health. Not show business, not no song, not no dance, not no contract, not no. There's nothing more important than my mental health and how I'm receiving things that come my way emotionally, mentally, especially with the background that I've had. It's very important. You know, so with that being said, you guys, I I I I would encourage you to see it and tell me what you get out of it. Uh, it was very good. It's very good. Or if you've seen it, leave your comment below. I'd actually love to hear what you thought about Mike Tyson's Hot boxing, and his particular guest that I'm talking about was a boosie badass. All right, if you like what you hear, please like, subscribe, and share, y'all. I'll see you in the next video.